My name is Sam Batnin and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. National economies in the global arena are organized as networks of producers, suppliers and consumers or users. Indeed, the network is one of two organizing principles in the world of business, the other being the hierarchy. Business units process flows of information, power and economic benefits, and they distribute these among the various stakeholders, management, shareholders, workers, consumers, government, communities, and so on. Time and space play a dominant role in both networks and hierarchies, but in different ways. Within, network, within networks, timing, time, determines priority and privileged access. First movers, pioneers, the first in time, benefit the most from network effects. In hierarchies, time is not so important as spatial positioning. One's slot in the pyramid determines one's outcomes, not one's tenure. Tenure matters less than position. But this picture is completely reversed when we consider the interactions that these two types of business units have with the environment. The spatial scope and structure of the network is the number of nodes, geographic coverage. The space element of the network determines its success. And with the hierarchy, it's the temporal aspect, the storied history of the hierarchy, its longevity. This is the best predictor of the hierarchy's reputational capital and its capacity for wealth generation. So, internally, time, tenure, being a veteran, being a first mover and a pioneer, determine how much you benefit from the network effects inside the network. In hierarchies, being at the right position determines how much you benefit, not how long you've been with the hierarchy, not your tenure, and not whether you are a veteran. There are no first movers and pioneers in hierarchies. Space and time. But when networks interact with their environment, with their surroundings, it is their spatial aspect that matters. And when hierarchies interact with the environment, it is the temporal aspect of the hierarchy that matters. How long it's been around? What is its track record? Counterintuitively, Access to information and the power that it affords are not strongly correlated with accrued benefits, not in networks and not in hierarchies. In networks, information and power flow horizontally. Everyone is equipotent, has the same power. And like a fractal or a crystal, every segment of the network is identical to every other segment both structurally and functionally. This is called isomorphism. But benefits in the network accrue vertically, not horizontally. So access to power, access to information is horizontal. Everyone has the same access to power, everyone has the same access to information in the network. But benefits do not accrue the same way, horizontally. They accrue vertically and they accrue to the initiators of the network. They are heavily dependent on one's tenure in the network, on how long you've been in the network, and how early you've entered the network, and the mass of nodes under you. Thus, earlier participants or members in the network enjoy an exponentially larger share of the benefits than latecomers, although everyone has the same access to information and power. An example is, of course, MLM. Uh, networks, commissions, and ad revenue. In hierarchies, benefit accrual, the accrual of benefits, is also not closely related to power or information. The accrual of benefits in hierarchies is closely related with one's position in the organization, but not with one's tenure. Power, information, and benefits are skewed they flow vertically and 
also, are also asymmetrical. The hierarchical organization is based on diminishing potency and on heteromorphism. No functional cross-section of the organization, of the hierarchy, resembles any other. Members of the hierarchy experience um, the hierarchy as kind of an overbearing structure. They feel that they, are, they have an external loss of control, that they are like puppets, manipulated from the outside. They often develop anoplastic defenses, blaming the world, their bosses, the structure, the bureaucracy for their failures, defeats, and errors. And many of them are passive-aggressive. Members of networks develop an internal locus of control. They attribute their successes to their own traits and behaviors. And they have autoplastic defenses. They take responsibility. They, they own their failures and defeats. They okay. recognize their errors. They try to learn from them. They are therefore narcissistic, not passive aggressive. Networks evolve from informal, diffused structures to increasingly formal ones. An example is Wikipedia. Hierarchies go exactly the opposite way. Hierarchies develop from formal to informal. The formal hierarchy ends up playing host to numerous informal networks. So we have a corporation, which is a formal structure, and then we have a boardroom, board of directors, which is the apex of the formal structure. But most boardrooms, most boards of directors, are actually informal networks. Decisions are made informally among members in accordance with their social standing, social interactions, friendships, and so on. The informal, uh, the informal structures, networks, which start as informal structures, usually introduce formal elements as time passes. So we have terms of service, regulations, laws, etiquette, netiquette, and so on. And the more formal the informal network becomes, the less nimble it is. The more focused, but also the more rigid. It loses gradually its advantages and, most more importantly, its attraction to new members. Hierarchies tend to concentrate their efforts, their concerted efforts, on problem solving and on fending off, seeing off challenges. Hierarchies seek equilibrium and homeostasis. They avoid creative destruction, disruptive technologies, and paradigm-altering innovation. Hierarchies like stability. They are inertial. Networks thrive on challenges, thrive on novelty. They prosper and benefit from disequilibrium and disruption. Networks foster technological instability, sometimes by way of planned obsolescence. They adore and encourage forms of chaotic interaction. Consequently, networks tend to attract mavericks and entrepreneurs, while hierarchies tend to attract managers and academics. Both hierarchies and networks are homophilic. They are composed of like-minded people. And they are therefore threatened by the emergence of in-house monocultures, which are susceptible to external shocks. And this, this phenomenon is called siloing. But networks are far better suited to leverage synergies. Networks are less rigid than hierarchies. They have the upper hand as far as response times and dissemination of new information go. Networks are also far better suited to optimize their social capital because they emphasize social peer-to-peer -peer interactions over top-down flows and the assumption of omniscience and omnipotence at the top.